वेलकम वेलकम टू हेलो गाइस वेलकम वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ रिप्स टू डेली ट्रेड रीकैप्स एंड टीचिंग्स होप एवरीबॉडी हैड अ ग्रेट डे लिटिल लेट वीडियो टुडे वाज अ वाज अ डिसेंट डे um it was a good day mostly more more trades were in the first hour and then you know we um, we didn't really do much uh, but um cpi day so cpi was you know it was um, most of the move was done in the pre market but um cpi um day was not a bad so we'll discuss all that before i do let's do a quick quick introduction so anybody who's new to me youtube my youtube or my community or my twitter or my ex um so um these trade trades and these trade ideas or these trades are recaps that any ideas that that i shared in the community from our game plan from our watch list or our different strategies and setups that we play in our community either it's day trade swing trade or any investment idea we go and recap them and we see what where we lost money where we made money why was the reason that we uh, you know what setup did we play what was the system we followed so we every day we try to learn from those trades and implement our teachings next day we do not trade random we use a repeatable system i have a repeatable system that thousands of traders use around the world ripstory and mcleod system my favorite levels wick strategies uh, 10 am concepts and other price action concepts that i teach um, in my community and i have been teaching over the years on twitter and on youtube as well so um so that's what we do every morning few hours before the market open my team um look goes through all the pre market movers up gappers down gappers news earnings and we come up with a game plan for the day today's game plan is right in front of you um we had bunch of names on game plan tesla coin costco tsm wdfc day l intel boeing nvidia kava so most of these players were um, the traders take this game plan and trade what they like what they see i trade few of them you know what i like i trade i traded kava from the plan i traded nvidia from the plan so we trade what we like and then we we share those ideas live commentary i'm on voice first few hours of the trading guiding the community through the market market comment, uh, commentary the sector commentary what is strong what is weak then we also have what we call as my day to day three plays this is a strategy that i invented for day to day three setups and we have the levels and the plan you can pause the screen and see how we play these setups how they work out so everything um, is there additionally i share every day in the morning i share what are my support and resistance levels for spy qqq iwm and all the big movers market indices dependent stocks like apple microsoft amd nvidia amazon so all those so traders can take those levels and trade on their own so this is the point of these ripster daily trade levels that i provide so with all these tools in our hand we are ready in the pre market to start our trade start our day and that's what we're going to recap all the trades in the community either my trades or any ideas shared by thousands of uh, traders um, hundreds of traders on our floor you know uh, to our trading floor we discuss all these trades and you know that's what we're going to recap all right now introduction is out of the way let's start with our first play of the day all right guys the first one we're going to discuss is nvidia you know before i discuss the nvidia so the market was gapping down today right so so market was gapping down and what the setup was either a gap you know um gap down bounce gap fill which we did not really get we got a little bit of bounce that's fine but um you know market ended up uh, red ended up down because of the cpi so anyways let's just talk about nvidia so what was the plan on nvidia let's go back to our game plan here so nvidia morgan stanley raises the nvidia profit target to $1000 from 795 If you watch my previous videos, if you watch my webinars, or if you watch my teachings, I always talk about how the tier one, tier two, tier three analysts affect more on price of stock than any other tiered analyst. Analysts, right? Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan. When these guys say something, mostly there is a very impressive move, and we don't get biased. We still follow our rules. So let's see. So 835, 830 was support. 845 was our resistance pivot. We use our clouds. We use these levels to trade. So as soon as the market open, we have a lot of option flows going on there. A lot of traders, um, you know, started to see the flow. You know, we saw the flow coming in, and we were watching, right? We didn't want to. jump right in 
because if we jump right in, then we can, you know, if it rejects this 512 clouds, then we can lose, right? It can reject right back. So we waited a little bit. So I waited a little bit, you know, I could have made much more, but that's fine. I waited for my better high probability entry than, you know, trying to just uh, chase, um, trying to go early. But that's fine, you know, some traders um, were executing much better than me. So as soon as the market opened, you can see everybody was talking about calls on the flow, calls, a lot of calls, and a lot of calls are coming in. Everybody's talking about the flow. As soon as we saw those calls, you know, um, uh, we said, yes, it's ready to long. I said, we start one third. Let's say you take 10 contracts, you add three, four contracts. And yet, then you see more bullishness. Then you see it's pushing over the key pivots. Uh, you see that 845 pivot it's pushing over and then then what you do is um, uh, you know then it's pushing over 850 pivot 856 pivots then you add more right once it's pushing over 850 you add more and I, look what i said scale into the position as it holds and market pushes so we scaled into that and um, you know i gave everybody 860 target the 860 60 was the breakout flag then i gave 870 target and then I said, once we hit 870, just take some like 875 lotos or something, you know, and end of the day, my options went 60, 70%. I was, uh, you know, I was happy with that. If you were early, your options probably went, um, you know, let's say um, 100, 150%, depending on what, where was your entry, what was your option. But that was a big, big move where we added from 846, 850, there was still like $20 worth of move. You could easily take, depending on your, if you're not trading options in your account side, you take 100, 200, 300 shares, whatever shares you can take based upon your account size and when you, you know, or the options you take and that's like you're risking $5 or $6 and trying to make $20, right? If you're risking $10, you're trying to make those $25. So one risk to three for reward on the shares and the options, of course, right? So you have to manage the options risk differently. But uh, if you're looking to make that 120% and you know, um, you know that if it dipped cert under certain point, you have to cut it. So, um, so that was the plan today. So you can see that um, live stamped, um, time stamped guidance. A lot of my guidance was on voice um, about the NVIDIA and it was a nice, nice win, all day win. Uh, I did tell and everyone if you want to, you know, it's closing at highs, right? The daily chart is uh, still nice. You know, we can have a move tomorrow as well. So I told everyone we can swing NVIDIA because I like this setup of flag because if market is bullish today, we can break out of this flag. It can do continuation. So that's why, you know, <clears throat> swinging some profit money in the NVIDIA, one hour also turned bullish. So nice, nice winner today. Um, no stress here. Easy winner, small size. Let it work. You can see my commentary from right from the morning. So next one we're going to talk about is Boeing, right? So what was the plan on Boeing? Let's look at the Boeing. So let's go back to our watch, our game plan first, right? Before even we look at something else, let's just go back and look at our game plan. What was our game plan for Boeing? So Boeing um, whistleblower, whistleblower was testifying, right? He said a lot of things later in the day. And um, so my bias on Boeing was bearish bias to short. If 178 holds, we long, otherwise we short it. So that was the guidance I gave everybody in the morning, bearish bias to short the pops. I also discussed in, in yesterday's video how the daily is bearish, one hour is bearish, everything is bearish. And look at this pop right at open and reject it. You can ignore the amateur move and you can start a short a trend move and the pop. And, um, you know, I did tell everyone that it's gap, um, you know, uh, under our uh, our uh, our game plan pivots, right? Bearish, bearish gap. You know, it's not a gap fill. It's supposed to, I was supposed to say bearish after gap fade. So, you know, under our pivots. And as long as it's under 175, it's a short and um, you just stay short and it never really really reclaimed um, you know that uh, 512 EMA clouds faded it broke this bear flag and then a lot of news was coming out and it was easy all day fade based upon our pre-market game plan you know we executed so that was nice one you know I, I couldn't focus on Boeing because I was focused on some other trades but definitely great trade for many people in the community so next one we're going to discuss is Costco. So Costco was basically, right, it was the news yesterday that Costco is selling 200 million in coin bars in a month. And as you guys I might have watched my previous video, I was, um, 
you know, I was also looking at a swing on Costco, and there's a nice, nice news today, right? They, they were pro- they were selling like a um, few hundred million or few some million in in a year or a quarter, and then now they are selling 200 million in a month. Imagine how much revenue they're making from there, even if their margin is little or smaller. But anyways, it was a bullish news. And anyways, even the daily chart on Costco was, um, you know, curling up. So that's why I liked it. Once the pivots that I gave to everyone, those pivots, the Costco pivots were 710, 716, neutral to long buys. And that's when I said, you know, you can long it. I was on the voice. You won't see the comments there, but I was on the voice when I told everybody you can long it. Um, 720 was the next pivot that I gave everyone that you know and um, you see 715 pivot is breaking out so this is when you can long here right when the clouds are turning you long here um, and uh, already most of my traders know this they know the system and um, you know so you can long it right and there's some trader was like when Costco pushed to 720 and it pulled back and some trader was kind of like panicking. Hey, what's going on? Ripster is still wrong. You know, I was like, it's still a long, man. You don't have to panic on Costco. Because, you know, it's just a 3450 cloud. And that's what I told him. You know, and that's what happened. See, 3450 cloud held and then it pushed. You know, so it was, um, and it was all day long from there. Next leg hold. I told everyone hold as long as trend holds. Um, you know, and... And even after hours, I held some, and I think some good news came out. It's gapping up. I might turn it into a swing now, um, to you know, and I'll call it a swing because the reason being, it's one hour already turned bullish. If tomorrow this daily turns bullish, then you know it's 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 a confirmed swing. But we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll just take profits and move on. But uh, nice trade today on Costco there. So next one we're going to look at is Kava. Kava was already on my day two watch list. If you see I have levels, it was my top one on my day two, day three list. 59, 21, 61 and 50 EMA was a test on daily, right? So look here where it bounced. It bounced from Ripster 3450 EMA clouds. So that's why it was important for me um, that how important it was this Kava, you know, so then Kava also had uh, upgrade by Argus, you know, tier third analyst, not a big deal, but the pivots were 659.60, day two, day three setup. I told everyone, check my day two, day three, um, you know, sheet. And and then I told everyone on voice that, yes, we can long that and long if pushes over cloud. And then we longed it and then it pushed initial profits nice then it pulled back so this one is a 3450 ema cloud pullback that i often talk about and then you risk this ema cloud and you long again right so we log some profits in the morning trade and it's still okay to hold i told everyone it pulls back you hold it all day and we held some swing even though there's a resistance here because if it breaks down tomorrow then we will have to exit and maybe short it but for now, it was a decent, decent push, but it's going right into resistance. So we'll see. Um, you know, I'm not really fully confident. To hold. I just held some profits, but um, I'm not really fully confident just holding it too much. You know, I mean, I might just sell and maybe if this breaks short it tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. But there's your time stamp commentary. Beautiful, beautiful trade on Kava today. Uh, let's look at the next one is WFC. So what was the plan on WDFC? Let's look at that. So WDFC was, um, you know, our um, the trade on our WDFC was the short, right? So freaks traders were taking that short. Um, so let's go back to see the plan. So plan on WFDFC was simple. There is a revenue miss. Bearish buys to short the pops. No short over the clouds. 245, 244 and 252 were our two levels. And, you know, and it pushed and then it faded. So see, again, you wait for the amateur move, right? So you wait for the amateur move and then you let that trend come in. You know, I didn't see it if I had seen, because I, I saw the amateur move and then I ignored it. But later, if I had seen this breakdown, that's where I would have shorted it. And then because look at this daily chart. So because you have to focus on this daily chart, how it's breaking you know, that's why I often tell you about the importance of daily chart, right? Because these daily charts are which tell you how big the breakdown or breakout will be. So that's what you need to focus on. So if you look at, 
you know what this daily chart is doing it's just uh, breaking a range so the daily gives you a confidence that it's gonna work out for a nice short all right so yeah let's look at the next one so there was a small loser today there for me personally uh, dxyz i've been trading it up and down this was a kind of choppy today so that's what i when i i told everybody trade turning bullish let's long it so we longed it versus that 52 um you know risking like five dollars four or five dollars just some shares because target was 64 66 right it was like supposed to be one risk to two or three reward trade but then it pulled right back and break when it's breaking here i stopped right away right i mean I did, it did bounce again but i didn't want to hold it because this job i would have not made any money anyways up and down so that was maybe we watch it tomorrow you know it's turning bullish but for today it was a loser and you can see my comments there so next one guys we're going to look at is uh, tesla so tesla was uh, on the voice in the first thing in the morning i told everybody on the voice was that do not long tesla it's heavy if we go to our game plan on tesla you can clearly see that bearish will watch with the market 172 174.50 it never really reclaimed any of those pivots for me to tell that i don't want to long tesla right so it was all it's a short it's a morning short it bounces the supporter becomes a resistance it's all day short not enough range i mean it's only traded 62 percent atr but you know it was a short today it was looking good yesterday but uh, but not today so we'll see how it goes if it breaks down it can come right back i was looking for a swing into the earnings but i'm not encouraged by the action that happened today maybe i'll watch it tomorrow again see what it gives us so there was another setup from our game plan was marna was a second number two on our day to day three sheet 109 112 55 or two levels because it has ran so much yesterday so we're very interested to short it but um, it gave up so much meat in the pre-market and but it was still a sh good fade right it still faded from like 109 40s to 106s so there was a decent decent fade to be had there if you wanted to do take it you know so um, one of, um 109s to 106s it was a nice day to set up little wiki at the open not perfect but i wish it did not flush here we would have showed it is so nicely from this 110 111 area but just want you to look at this setup how it worked out so next one we're gonna just look at is baba so baba was a short that was that's what it was it was a gap fill bearish gap fill in the morning small range right it doesn't really have a lot of range you showed here 74 um you know when it was breaking these clouds 74 44 to 44 so i never really like baba so much because of this range such a tight range um that's what i even talked about people in the you know because it never really moves a bigger range it's such a huge float um you know so it was kind of a short but then came back just get out because maybe what you made like 20 30 cents but definitely filled some uh, you know some of that uh, gap you know it definitely feel uh, some of that but you know look at that from the opening price 50 uh, 50 fibonacci if i see the high 61 fibonacci you know so definitely definitely feel some of that not complete but you know nothing big there no just want to point out so next one we're going to look at is delta airlines dal so the plan on delta airline was let's see um gap fill under 4820 no long under it simply i told everyone there's no long under 4820 and if you see what it did um breaks amateur move swipes back up right and then the trend move started to break down and this when this is happening you know it's already bearish right so avoiding the amateur move was key here because you see whenever you see this candle remember whenever there's a big candle right before the open that's a problem because it's this they will cover whoever is short here they will cover at the open so you need to understand that so especially when this happens, make sure you wait the amateur move and then you short it and and you see once my level was gone 48 20 it was all day fade so beautiful trade um in the community a lot of traders were short delta uh, rgv just nailed it beautiful beautiful short by R R rgv just uh, you know beautiful stress free it was a stress free completely stress free um great guidance on the floor today um, by rgv and many others 
so the next one uh, we're going to look at is uh, another day two setup djt you know so the djt setup we we watch it every day and um, you know we can see the other, same thing we can, we don't have to trade everything but just focus on some traders like djt they were trading djt look at the levels right 36 37 5 38 and what did djt do so djt once that 36 was gone that's it and if you see the upside levels on djt 37 5 38 right 37 50 so you see this level 37 50 this one and you see where it rejected close to that level so if you're shorting on the pop this is where you short and then you see it's bearish you can add here even if you add here that's no problem but then you put your stops over the cloud and when this breaks you add more there and then you see djt faded from 36 to 33 very bearish you know if it this if djt breaks this level guys it's gonna go back to where it came from it's gonna go back to 20 and um, you know it's djt is just just a stress-free trade there's no stress in djt short it was it's just that simple so we'll watch it tomorrow what it does but um, i want you to guys to look at the levels i'm going to do a detailed webinar for my community on day two day three setups explain how i find these setups and what's the reasoning what are the rules even though you can pause the screen and read the high level rules but uh, these day two day three setups are just stress-free right if you if the trigger mostly you look at the volume you can't just pick up any day to day three you have to see the volume the chart the daily chart and what is clicking right so um, that's what you have to do it was nice um, Eddie Eddie was did did um, did good job on uh, DJT so let's look at Intel INTC so intel was again right remember it ran yesterday it was uh, our day to set up um you know 3780 3840 day to set up yesterday new spikes so it was a yesterday's new spike and today it broke out of broke down of all the levels 3780 you know 3780 broke right here and faded and what was my upside level my upside level was 3840 3840 never even pushed there so it was a decent decent threshold for small accounts right look at how bearish the daily chart is so that's why I focus on these day two moves that was the reason intel was on my watch list because of this big move i knew that if it breaks the cloud it's bearish simply clouds guys over the clouds bullish under the clouds bearish it's a simple rule nothing complicated about this one all right, guys. Let's uh, let's look at this next one. I want to talk about is IWM. So IWM. Let's go back and see what were our levels. IWM 199.53. Of course, there was 200 psychological level, 202. So we had these levels on IWM. Uh, you know, it was consolidating here, 200 psychological level. I wanted to short it if it broke 200, but it never broke 200. So that was the thing, right? I will short if 200 breaks but it never broke the 200 started to push and it was just, just a bounce over versus the 200 and um, just want to see that how to avoid if i'm trying to short it here i'm going to lose money so just want to recap the reasoning right because when there's such a big gap down sometimes we'll get this bear flag breaks down that's when we short when we are trying to short this it's little gets a little hard because you have to make a judgment call because support is right under it 200 support is right under it so you know there's a buyer here so you know shorting that's not like a good good idea so just want to point out that we were ready to short but we did not i said we'll short if 200 breaks but you know never gave us a setup so just want to recap that understand this it's a big big huge level We'll watch it tomorrow. Tomorrow is PPI. If PPI is bad, we'll see what happens. Otherwise, we'll long it versus 200. So just watch it uh, for tomorrow. So I'm just going to, before we wrap up, guys, uh, let's look at the SPY, QQQ, and the, all those charts. Um, today was basically a chop. If I look at the daily chart, I mean, I don't get really any confidence on this daily chart that what direction is going to take. But it made this nice, nice little um, candle, right? so whatever direction it goes from there this direction is going to go that side tomorrow right so it's nice low range very low range so we'll see what direction it takes uh, let's see qqq qqq are being ruled by semiconductors again 
whatever direction spy qqq Q, Q goes from here will t will follow that and interesting thing to note today guys vix is getting strong so watch out if vix breaks out of this level here that's not going to be good for the markets so you know so that's what i'm watching and um, i'm watching ppi tomorrow so you know i want to do some swings i'm working on some earnings um, earning plays earning run-ups i'm going to put put some list for my community and maybe i'll share on twitter as well um, going to be very busy busy week for us uh, in coming uh, weeks going to be a lot of opportunities to trade so we'll be ready guys so keep learning keep grinding if you want to trade with me uh, trade with us come join our community family community and uh, do not come for the alerts and uh, i will guide you you know but you can't come for blind alerts we are not an alert service but definitely we are one of the best educational community and we have um, you know uh, we have a very cozy environment no egos everybody helps everybody straight to the point i love to help you guys so make sure if you want to join please join otherwise keep studying keep following on twitter on meditstreeducation.com keep watching my youtube videos and recaps i'll see you tomorrow thank you everyone bye bye